Welcome to this news flash from March 2016. Critical space infrastructure faces crippling missile strikes, small satellites, lasers. China and Russia are preparing to attack and disrupt critical U.S. military and intelligence satellites in a future conflict with crippling space missile, maneuvering satellite, and laser attacks, senior Pentagon and intelligence officials told Congress on Tuesday. Air Force General John Hyten, commander of the Air Force Space Command, said the threat to U.S. space systems has reached a new tipping point, and after years of post-Cold War stagnation foreign states are focused on curbing U.S. space systems. Adversaries are developing kinetic, directed energy, and cyber tools to deny, degrade, and destroy our space capabilities, Hyten said in a prepared statement for a hearing of the House Armed Service Strategic Forces Subcommittee. They understand our reliance on space, and they understand the competitive advantage we derive from space. The need for vigilance has never been greater, the four-star general said. Hyten said U.S. global positioning system satellites remain vulnerable to attack or jamming. The satellite's extremely accurate timekeeping feature is even more critical to U.S. guided weapons than their ability to provide navigation guidance, he said. Disrupting the satellite's time capabilities would degrade the military's ability to conduct precision strike operations used in most weapon systems today. Hyten said a new Joint Military Intelligence Command Center is helping to monitor space threats, such as anti-satellite missile launches, covert killer robot satellites, and ground-fired lasers that can blind or disrupt satellites. The unit is called the Joint Interagency Combined Space Operations Center, located at Schriever Air Force Base, Colorado. The Space Command also is creating 39 cyber mission teams that will be used for defensive and offensive cyber operations involving space systems. Lt. Gen. David Buck, commander of Joint Functional Component for Space, a U.S. Strategic Command unit, testified along with Hyten that China and Russia pose the most serious threats to space systems. Simply stated, there isn't a single aspect of our space architecture, to include the ground architecture, that isn't at risk, Buck said. Russia views U.S. dependency on space as an exploitable vulnerability and they are taking deliberate actions to strengthen their counter-space capabilities, he said. China in December created its first dedicated space warfare and cyber warfare unit, called the Strategic Support Forces, for concentrating their space, electronic, and network warfare capabilities, Buck said. China is developing, and has demonstrated, a wide range of counter space technologies to include direct ascent, kinetic kill vehicles, co-orbital technologies that can disable or destroy a satellite, terrestrially based communications jammers, and lasers that can blind or disable satellites, Buck said. Moreover, they continue to modernize their space programs to support near real-time tracking of objects, command and control of deployed forces, and long-range precision strikes capabilities, the three-star general said. Douglas Lovero, Deputy Assistant Defense Secretary for Space Policy, also warned about growing threats to satellites and outlined U.S. plans to deter future attacks. Lovero said the United States does not want a war in space. But let me be clear about our intent we will be ready, he said. None of the five Pentagon and intelligence officials who took part in the budget hearing for military space efforts mentioned any U.S. plans or programs to develop anti-satellite missiles and other space weapons for use against Chinese or Russian space systems. The subcommittee, however, held a closed-door session after the public hearing. A modified U.S. missile defense interceptor, the SM-3, was used in 2008 to shoot down a falling U.S. satellite in a demonstration of the country's undeclared anti-satellite warfare capability. Lovero suggested U.S. defense and deterrence of space attacks could involve counterattacks, possibly on the ground or in cyberspace. But he provided no specifics. Today our adversaries perceive that space is a weak link in our deterrence calculus, Lovero said. Our strategy is to strengthen that link to assure it never breaks, and to disabuse our adversaries of the idea that our space capabilities make tempting targets. Many of the most important navigation, communications, and intelligence satellites were designed during the Cold War for use in nuclear war and thus incorporate hardening against electronic attacks, Lovero said. 
for conventional military conflict, however, adversaries today view attacks on U.S. satellites as a way to blunt a conventional military response what Lovero called the chink in the conventional armor of the United States. A space defense offset strategy will seek to reduce the advantage of using relatively low cost of missiles, small satellites, or cyber forces to attack U.S. satellites, Lovero said. An advanced U.S. satellite might cost upwards of $1 billion. Missiles that could destroy such a satellite cost a few percent of that sum. Co-orbital microsatellites cost even less. And lasers that might blind or damage satellites have an unlimited magazine with almost zero cost per shot, Lovero said. Deploying large numbers of low-cost satellites will not offset those advantages, he said. Instead, Lovero offered vague plans for countering the threat. A space offset strategy must employ a diverse set of resilience measures that complicate the technical, political, and force structure calculus of our adversaries, by arraying a complex set of responses, with few overlapping vulnerabilities and a combination of known and ambiguous elements, he said. Frank Calvelli, Deputy Director of the National Reconnaissance Office, the spy agency that builds and operates strategic intelligence and reconnaissance satellites, said a resurgent Russia and aggressive China are among several current national security threats. Calvelli revealed that the agency in October launched a new satellite that carried 13 smaller Cube SATS. The NRO sponsored nine of the Cube SATS while the National Aeronautics and Space Administration sponsored the remaining four, Calvelli said. Among the missions of the Cube SATS are software-defined radios to provide beyond line-of-sight communication for disadvantaged users in remote locations, and technology pathfinders to demonstrate tracking technologies, optical communications, and laser communication, he said. Four advanced intelligence-gathering satellites will be launched this year to support military operations and intelligence analysis and decision-making. The agency also is improving the persistence of our space-based systems, providing greater time on target to observe and characterize activities, and the potential relationship between activities, and to hold even small, mobile targets at risk, Calvelli said. It also is upgrading its ground stations, which are used to control and communicate with orbiting satellites, including an artificial intelligence system called Sentient. Sentient thinking system that allows automated, multi-intelligence tipping and queuing at machine speeds s just one of those capabilities, Calvelli said. New ground stations also are being deployed that will empower users of all types with the capabilities to receive, process, and generate tailored, timely, highly assured, and actionable intelligence, he said. The Pentagon currently has 19 military-capable GPS satellites on orbit and a new generation of GPS satellites is being developed that will be produce signals three times stronger than current system to be able to overcome electronic jamming, he said. The officials at the hearing also discussed plans to transition from the sole reliance on the use of Russian-made RD-180 rocket engines to launch national security satellites. A new U.S.-made engine, however, will not be fully developed until 2022 or 2023. Thanks for watching. Share like and subscribe for more.